waited for God to show me something. It seemed I was destined to wait on the Lord in my solitude. When I was quite young, I lost my husband. I found myself with no family, no protection, no means to provide for myself. I had nothing. Well, that's not exactly true. I had one thing, one precious, priceless thing that belonged just to me, my faith. I had a God who would see me through. I didn't know how at the time, but I knew that he would. Finding myself in extreme poverty, I threw myself at the mercy of the church. I decided to dedicate my life to the Lord's work. After all, I have no child to live for, so why not live for God? I became a woman of worship. My days were spent in prayer and fasting. Eventually, I moved into a small room provided me by the temple. All day, every day, I tended to the needs of the Lord's house. I was married to the word of God, and I became a mother of truth. I nurtured and cared for it as if it were a part of me. Well, it was a part of me. It was all of me. God's truth was my heart's one desire. My one expectation in life was to see a miracle. A miracle of God's grace for Israel. Israel needed grace. Desperately. As a nation, we had strayed so far from the path of light that we now stumbled in the darkness. Both the northern and southern kingdoms were plagued by apostasy and idolatry. People performed rituals as if putting on a show. <laughs> the temple in Jerusalem was the one place where true priesthood could offer sacrifice. That is where the word of God was spoken, and that is where I made my home. I lived a quiet life. Dignified and devoted to ministry, I spent my days teaching the word of God to women. We'd pour over the scrolls and writings, and I did my best to, to guide them. I believed that God desired communion and service not just from the men, but from the women as well. Could we not, as women, be teaching each other the ways of the Lord? I wanted every word that I spoke to point to God's grace. And as a woman from the tribe of Asher, I knew of God's grace. But I also knew it wasn't meant just for me, but for all to partake in. And one day, one day, God would send a Savior. A Savior that would be the embodiment of God's unfailing love. That is what I hoped for. And that is why I waited. Some thought it foolish of me to waste my life in the temple. After all, hundreds of years had passed since Isaiah had prophesied the coming of a Savior. Perhaps God had forgotten his promise? Perhaps Isaiah was mistaken. So much time had passed, and Israel only seemed to be drifting further and further from God's favor. Perhaps God changed his mind? Perhaps we were not worthy. Oh, yes, we, we were not worthy. But that never changed God's mind before. He had always come through for his people, and always when we needed him the most. God had been there through it all. He was faithful with his promises. Did he not keep his word with Abraham and Sarah? Or how about Hannah, Ruth, Moses, Joshua, and David, the king? Had he not been faithful to them as well? Yes, the scrolls were overflowing with testaments of God's kept promises. In his own time, he always came through for his people. So why should his people doubt him now? I knew hundreds of years had passed since the prophecy had been made. And I knew that Israel, once a great nation, now lay in ruin at the hands of our enemies. But could that not be seen as our own doing? No, I would not listen to those who would rebuke God's faithfulness. Passionately, I held on to the hope that God would fulfill his vow. After all, there was Simeon. Simeon was a fellow temple servant and a righteous man. God had made a promise to him as well. He told me that God would not let him die until he had seen the Savior. And, well, Simeon wasn't getting any younger. Little did I know how soon God would fulfill that promise. That day was like any other. People came and people went. Offerings were made and prayers were spoken and blessings were given. But there was one blessing that surprised me. As I made my way through the 
crowds, I came upon Simeon. He seemed so overcome that I took notice at once. And as I made my way closer, I could see that he was holding a small child. And with tears in his eyes, he said, Sovereign Lord, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation. He told his mother that this child was bound to cause the rising and falling of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts would be revealed. Suddenly, I realized that what I had been fasting and praying for for over 60 years was right in front of me. This tiny bundle in Simeon's arms was God's promise fulfilled. He was the answer, the Messiah. Years and years of fervent prayer were now turned to praise. God had led me to that exact moment so that I might bear witness to the unfolding of God's mercy and grace. Me, a flower who is quickly fading, was chosen to see God's glory face to face. How could I not share this news with all who I met? Who am I? I was the one who waited.